nonprofit management consultant. <laughs> David Bates, Energy Conservation and Renewable Energy Program Manager at FPL. <laughs> Dr. John Van Leer, UEL Board Member and Associate Professor of Meteorology and Physical Oceanography. Albert Harum Alvarez, UEL board member and builder of the Green House. <laughs> running for a commission position. Eight district. Eight <laughs> well, as a Miami native, and I'm not sure how many are in the room, but there seems to be less all the time. Uh, it's very important to us to discuss sustainability and, and how we achieve sustainability. So I've come up with several questions, also from some of the panelists here. And I'm first going to talk to you about what you see at a 30,000 foot level, how you feel we're going to move from fossil fuel to renewable energy technology, either in technology or education. And after that, I'm going to ask you three ways we can do that. So we'll start with the overview. All right, can you hear me okay? A little louder. All right, about now. A little better? Great. All right, well, thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, my name is George Cabros. I work with a couple uh, nonprofit uh, clean energy groups, National, Natural Resources Defense Council and Southern Alliance for Clean Energy. And those organizations work on trying to get the rules and regulations right in Florida um, in a way that will promote uh, clean energy solutions. And I think ultimately that's what it comes down to is getting the rules and regulations right at the state level, the national level, possibly at, at the local level. And I can tell you that we have made um, some progress, but we, we, we have a, a long way to go in order to encourage um, energy efficiency and to encourage renewable energy. Um, those, in, in, in my mind, is, is what clean energy is when, when you hear um, clean energy in, in the press and newspapers on TV is, is energy efficiency and renewable energy. And the reason for that is energy efficiency is your lowest cost resource at about two to four cents a kilowatt hour. It's the cheapest and fastest way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Um, it also helps uh, customers lower their bills and um, it also puts people back to work. Um, the other uh, component of that is renewable energy and that requires a state policy, if, if not a national policy, that encourages our state's utilities to generate a portion of their electricity from renewable um, resources. That drives a local market. It shows that the state has commitment. It brings developers into the state, which make investments, which create jobs, and which um, uh, really gets renewable energy implementation going in the state of Florida. Hi again, Jane Gilbert. I, I work with uh, schools, local governments, and uh, nonprofits with energy efficiency and sustainability and education outreach on energy efficiency and sustainability. Um, we're never going to get to full market transformation and get off our dependence on fossil fuels until there is a real price on carbon uh, at the national level and then at the national, the U.S. can then make a case for a global level. Uh, this is not going to be an easy fight. It's the special interests are, are very high, but until we put together the best cap and trade slash carbon tax hybrid legislation possible, we're never going to get to the level that we need to reduce greenhouse gases and avoid the potentially disastrous impacts that could have here, um, which we won't tell the rusty pelican about. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, the the the, the I, I just researched in 2008 uh, legislative elections at the national level, both the Senate and in U.S. The contributions from oil and gas, from electric utilities, and coal mining were over $57 million. 
the campaign contributions from alternative energy and energy efficiency was under $2 million. Not that there's a correlation as to why that might make it challenging for us to achieve the goal, but this means that we really need to get out there and, and, and voice our opinion that we need to support those advocacy groups that are out there uh, building a broad base for climate change because, let's face it, we need it for climate change, we need it for the economy, and we need it for um, for avoiding the other health and, and impacts of, of uh, fossil fuel extraction and burning. So that's the first thing. I, I, I will, when we get back, I'll talk more about some of the things at the state and local level, and particularly the education that you asked for, but I, I'll, I think my time's up, so I'll let it go. Thank you, Jane. David? Uh, David Bates with uh, Florida Power and Light, and yes, we're still called Florida Power and Light. Uh, although, kind of somewhat to answer your question, the, the parent company and one of the other subsidiaries renamed itself NextEra Energy. Florida Power and Light through Next Air Energy is, one of, is the largest producer of renewable energy in the United States. So in, in the theme of threes, I think uh, awareness, scale, and cost are kind of the things that will help us get from this time to whenever that next era is, and I think the next era will be more renewable energy or more different types of energy that can be considered clean. Uh, but Florida Power and Light, Next Energy, energy Resources, it is obviously dedicated to it because we're practicing what we're preaching. We're out there talking about and literally doing it. Uh, we've built the largest PV site in the nation, uh, in DeSoto County, a 25 megawatt site. Uh, there have been a lot of people who visited President Obama up in Washington, D.C., and done a lot of talking about it. But the problem is, is none of them have done it. Uh, and we're out doing it, and we, we, we definitely want to do more. So, first of all, it's awareness. A lot of people out there, uh, it really, and we've worked with people like Jane to make people more aware of things like energy conservation. And people do need to be made more aware of what their alternatives are to different types of energy. Energy conservation is one of them that George spoke about earlier. Um, so, awareness is really a big hurdle. Uh, second is scale. You have to do it in big enough, you have to have that shift in big enough amounts in order to really get you from one time period using fossil fuel to another time period when you're not. And, and the other is cost. Ultimately, the cost, there has to be a cost for using that carbon. And Florida Power Light is and does support carbon legislation, you know, in Washington, D.C. So, you know, that in itself would uh, generate a, a clean energy industry in Florida. It would help us move toward that and would help us uh, in our effort to, to curb global warming. Thank you, David. Dr. John, I want to say that, Dr. John. Okay. John, John Van Leer from uh, the University of Miami. Uh, John, I teach, yeah, I teach sustainability uh, as, a, as a class uh, subject. And I'd, I'd like to start off saying by the pace at which we are actually making the transformation uh, is nowhere near to the speed that we actually need. We have about 10 years to make this transformation. And most transformations are made between generations, maybe two or three generations. There's this gradual shift from one thing to the other. Um, sea level uh, project is projected to rise by the Climate Change Task Force between uh, three and five feet by the end of the of 2100 and possibly significantly more uh, this summer I'm going to Greenland to see the the ice fall apart uh, the, we're going to visit the Jacobs Haven Glacier which is calving 70 cubic kilometers worth of ice uh, plus the meltwater that's coming out of it and this is deadly serious and the melt rate is accelerating both in Antarctica and in Greenland, 5% a year. That's, that is uh, like compound interest. This is a, an exponentially increasing melt rate. So we have to do something really strong, really fast. We have to do something that engages the population in a way that hasn't been done probably since Earth Day uh, some years ago, uh, like 40 years ago, when people first began to be...